Hey what's up guys, Regan Brothers here for a new video. As you may have noticed, we did a Serek course a few weeks ago, hosted by former Georgian Special Forces Zurab Skitishvili, also known as Instructor Delta at the Delta Survival School in Luxembourg. Now since this was a pretty special course, we noticed some of you guys showing interest in what we did over there and our overall experience. So for that reason, you have sent in some questions to us. So we will make work of it today to answer them. And let's start with the first one. As for worries of being able to complete the course, uh, when Delta first pitched the idea of a SERE course to us, I was like, okay, this is going to be crazy military stuff. But then I saw it was basically an, an open event, so people could join no matter what knowledge they had. So I was like, okay, it's going to be more civil, I can do this. And then the day before, Delta started to yeah, create some expectations of us uh, for the course. And then I was a little bit worried again, but overall, no real worries. I feel like a painting. <laughs> I feel like what? <laughs> painting. <laughs> If I was worried whether I could finish the course, I'd say no, because we have had some experience with Instructor Delta in the past already, where he trained us in, in uh, tactical experiences, and I know how he is like, and I know over the years I have built quite an amount of confidence. My confidence level is big enough uh, to succeed at the things that I want to do, and this was one of the things that I really wanted to go for. Um, but I can tell you, I was a little bit worried about the fact that I didn't have any survival knowledge up front. As for the aspect of fear, I wouldn't say there were like big fears or doubts in my mind. But there was kind of like the, the feeling of the unknown, the, the inconvenient feeling. Uh, where especially up front because you don't know what to expect. During the course that wasn't really the case because uh, Zurap is really good at his work about uh, when teaching uh, to people and that uh, gives you like the, the confidence to to go through with it um, but like fear in itself no not really the thing I feared the most was not really in front of the course but more during the course because we spent a whole day over there and we didn't eat or drink much and my team was a team to get food so that was not a problem but getting the water was uh, becoming a problem because I did most of the scouting and then um, also attacking the enemy camp I did on my own so all these efforts started to build up a serious form of thirst and yeah I was really like okay I know I'm going to survive this but it's it's really an inconvenience to not have access to clean water to drink really knowing what was coming before it started I would say no I had my expectations but yeah, if it's a, it's a new thing and you've never done it before, you're always going to be um, yeah, somewhat in the right direction, but also way off. Um, there are always things you don't expect and then they happen and you just have to deal with it. As for preparations for the course, when it comes to the physical preparation, we just do our schedules. Um, so we didn't do any extra efforts when it comes to that. Uh, I had it in my mind to do some uh, running but uh, with a backpack, but yeah, it's not always uh, easy to do it in the city because people might look weird at you. Um, but besides that, um, as for knowledge, for example, we didn't have any. And yeah, when Delta started to change a lot of stuff um, of my expectations of the course the day before, I was like uh, really thinking, okay, how am I going to deal with this? And then I just said, okay, I'm going to take a rest. And the day after, just any moment you had, you looked some stuff up, you were worried about overnight. How am I going to deal with this? How am I going to deal with this? So, like last minute preparations when it comes to knowledge, yes, <laughs> through the internet. The material aspect, of course, we did prepare some stuff because we needed uh, some equipment, like a much bigger backpack. And of course, like yeah, your typical sleeping equipment, a tarp a sleeping mat, a sleeping bag, a knife, a flashlight, all the, the materials that help you in order to survive. Things that were easier than expected, I really can't say anything uh, directly, 
but I can tell you that there were definitely things that were harder than expected um, and that was especially the lack of sleep um, like in 43 hours we did like only two and a half hour of sleep in total um, of course with driving towards and going back home and of course because of that lack of sleep it had an influence on how you performed during uh, the day and especially with the part where we uh, were taught about navigation and stuff um, that was the part where I was basically kind of losing <laughs> losing the, my attention a bit but also another thing which happened after that was like the 10 kilometer march we had to do with our 15 kilograms backpacks and like 14 kilometers was no problem at all the last one kilometer was like my energy level went down all the way and the weight of my back was like really slowing down all my body uh, in all my movements so the last kilometer was like pretty much hell to get back to Delta Survival School. I would say compared to what I had imagined of the course, not really. But during the course when I was trying to sneak up on the enemy camp, my brother's camp, it was not really dark yet and I was like, okay, this is getting very hard because there is just too much light, people can easily see me. So I was really worried about will I be able to get something to drink this night or uh, will I stay thirsty? But then when after midnight the sun was really gone, I was like, okay, now we're gonna have fun. It, uh, it took me long, but yeah, eventually I managed it. So um, in the beginning when there is light, it was harder. But when the lights were gone, it was just be patient and you'll get there. As for having a point where I wish I didn't join the course, uh, maybe a, a little tiny bit. Um, during the night when I had to yeah, keep the fire running, um, I didn't have much experience with it. So it was, yeah, I didn't want to do anything wrong. And we did two hour shifts of yeah, every job there was to do. So it was a long two hours, but after that, I went to sleep and after that I attacked the enemy camp and I, it was totally out of my mind and uh, I had the best time ever. No there wasn't, um, even though it got really tough at the end, but I say it was really like an, an experience unlike any other. It really um, gave another experience on on what you as a human are capable of. and what our bodies are actually built for, um, which is basically survival. So the resilience that was built during that course and the confidence of what you are able to do was totally worth it in my eyes. If there were any parts I refused to do, I would say, no, there weren't, but there was one part where I was like, <laughs> I'd rather don't do this, uh, which was like the, the edible plants part. Um, which was basically we plucked out a leaf from the ground and we had to eat it um, of course we just did it no problem with that whatsoever but it's just like it's like a, a, a boundary you're somewhat crossing you're not used to doing that kind of stuff so that was kind of sketchy when it comes to refusing or not completing certain tasks uh, I didn't refuse anything and I completed everything but eating the edible plants was like out of my comfort zone a bit but then you just do it and it's done but uh, it was chewy. If there were parts where we helped each other through it of course there were um, because one we are brothers and we are pretty close ones and of course it's our job to work together um, and get ourselves through this sort of stuff so um yeah they're like the part where i had a difficult time at the end with my heavy backpack of course he provided me some motivation to keep going and get through it but there was also like a part yeah. where uh, he was basically nice really and thirsty and i got hungry so we exchanged some some stuff with each other in order uh, to get through it and there's another one uh, that has to do with food as well uh, in the morning because he had all the food and I had nothing uh, he called me and he said come over to my camp 
uh, I have a breakfast for you and uh, it was the most delicious breakfast I've ever had <laughs> because I was so hungry. Of course I can sense when my brother is struggling, of course I, I also can see it um, on how other people behave and help them as well um, if they have a difficult time. Yes, you can definitely see it, especially when it comes to handlings. But when it comes to fatigue, it is a little bit harder because it's like a slow process that builds up. And at a certain point, you, you do see that people are getting a little bit cranky. Definitely if you're doing some unexpected stuff that is not in their advantage. Um, so yes, you, you can see it. When it comes to asking for help, um, this is like a two-sided thing. Um, sometimes if you're switching roles, for example, you are obviously asking for help. Sometimes you just need help, so yes, then we do ask for help. Um, but when it comes to these things that are more like individual achievements for which you actually join the course, then you always try to toughen it out. For example, my brother, when he had a really tough time with his backpack, uh, during the march, I often asked him whether um, I should take his backpack for a while but then he was like, no, I'm gonna make it, it's just step by step, little bit by little bit, pushing more um, to eventually make that achievement of his own. Well, I can say with the, the last part with my backpack, I certainly had a difficult time and that one I really tried to toughen out. Uh, because there is one aspect where as there's the teamwork and uh, of course you want to work together as good as possible but on the other hand you also want to succeed as an individual and that really was like uh, a challenge for me to get over it and I eventually I did tough that out um, and get through it. Whether I lost any kit in the field no, basically nothing. Um, of course, the rations were eaten and uh, they were gone. But as for our equipment, nothing was lost. And I think that maybe has to do... No, that will certainly have to do with the fact that we um, try to organize our stuff really neatly um, to make sure that we know where everything is and that way you don't lose anything. Whether I lost any part of my kid or not, no. Um, and I think that the reason for this is that um, maybe it, it comes from the, the tactical mindset we have, but I only take out of my backpack what I need, and when I don't need it anymore, it goes in my backpack again. So even if there was to be a point where we, ha we would have to flee, I just can take my backpack, it's, it's already packed, and this way you don't lose anything. Whether I would do the course again, definitely. Um, this time obviously with a little bit more experience so maybe there are certain things I would do differently or, or try because I already did them um, in another way so I would definitely do it again and uh, when it comes to recommending it <laughs> yeah if you're um, a little bit of a tactical mindset and you want to learn to survive and stuff like that I would definitely recommend it I also asked some of our team members to join in the next course and uh, they're looking forward to it as well I'd say definitely I would go uh, more if I can, um, but uh, for the guys that I know, I would absolutely recommend it to them because the amount of uh, knowledge, confidence, resilience that you built in just two days is enormous and it uh, really makes you kind of a different person um, by doing this kind of stuff. So stuff I lacked in my equipment, I'd say, we basically got everything covered pretty well, um, especially for the first time. But there was one, like one stupid little thing that we uh, didn't cover, and that was basically a simple headlight. That was everything that we missed. So uh, we definitely have to look for those, and um, I know uh, where to get some. Um. One thing that would give an awesome advantage <laughs> would be a night vision goggle, because. At night, if you turn on the light, yeah, everybody knows where you are. Um, maybe with a small light, they don't, but uh, it would be very convenient to have a good night vision goggle, yeah. <laughs> I'd say my kit did meet all expectations. Um, of course, we didn't spend our money on crap, um, because we learned that's already the hard way um, in the past. But um, I'd say, yeah, basically from the clothing down to the boots, to the socks, 
um, our knife, really well knife um, for survival purposes. And then of course the backpack, um, sleeping bag, all performed really well. Um, as for the backpack, I can say that was definitely the most important one, um, especially with that 10 kilometer hike. And this one performed really, really well. I can say that the weight distribution, the comfort level, everything about it is really well designed and engineered in order to do these hikes um, and it got me through it so yeah definitely good stuff my existing kit definitely met the performance i expected of it of course it's it's not just some common trash i, I found somewhere it's quite expensive stuff um, so i did expect it to perform well um, one thing i was really blown away by actually are the uphill sport socks we at a certain point went through the water and our boots just filled up with the water from the river and yeah we we did some some hiking to to do uh, certain uh, calculations for navigation and an hour later our boots were perfectly dry our socks were dry so that's something that yeah really stayed with me like i need to keep these socks <laughs> whether it helps for airsoft or not i i don't really see the connection between one another maybe if you do some more professional milsim events this course could actually help you out definitely when it comes to staying concealed at night behind enemy lines um, but i mostly think it is just a uh, life experience you gain there uh, you gain so much confidence just of being on your own in the woods and you know trying to survive okay we were not mainly on our own but you are just with two three people um, so it does a lot when it comes to that um, and it's obviously is a fun thing to do but mainly our goal was the life experience you get from it i'd say um, it can help if you go to things like military simulation events but for regular airsoft i would say no um, what really makes it interesting in my eyes is that uh, you create abilities in order to survive which goes way beyond just airsoft and milsim it's just important as a human being to know these things in in my opinion why <laughs> eat that tape man Bring it back. Ah. <laughs> That's it. So guys, that was it for the questions. Maybe some other stuff you might want to know. Even though this course only lasted for two days, we had to recover for about three days. So keep that in mind if you ever participate in such a course. So guys, in overall we can say we are actually impressed by the resilience and confidence that we have built over this weekend. Um, it is quite interesting to learn how you are able to survive situations out of your comfort zone with the right skills and knowledge. And to tell you, this was only two days, so it's basically just the beginning. There is much more stuff coming soon. So for you guys that are actually interested in such a set of course, Instructor Delta already planned a new set of course, which will be an extended set of course. This will also include self-defense and basic tracking and some other stuff. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, you can book on deltasurvivalschool.com. We will definitely be there again because there's always more to learn. So we hope this video gave you some better idea of what this sere was all about if you got any more questions let them know in the comments below we will answer them as quickly and as good as we can thanks for watching and you'll see us next time